Hi, my name's Laura Clark. I just turned 20 years old. I'm an accounting major and I'm a first generation college student. So my mom was born in the Philippines and she moved to this country when she was 15 or 16 years old, I don't know. And my dad was born here in the United States. Um, I grew up in New York City, the Bronx. Yeah, I have a lot of memories here from childhood and teenage years. Me and Megan crying. <laughs> I remember being a senior in high school and our teachers were starting to tell us that we need to apply to colleges and I was like, oh my god, like super overwhelming. It is like your teacher's telling you that and you have no idea what you want to do with your life and you're like, where, what, where am I going? Like, what is happening? Financial aid too. And so pretty much I had to go home and figure it all out by myself because obviously my mom didn't understand any of that. She has no idea what college even, like, is, like... <laughs> so, when I was applying for financial aid, they ask you, like, a lot of financial questions. And so, I would do that all by myself because I have been doing my mom's taxes since I was, like, 14 or 15 years old. That was kind of hard to just, like, put together, I guess, being 17, 16 years old, and you're like, okay, what does this even mean? When I first signed up for financial aid, my first year in college, I went away to SUNY Oneonta and I spent one semester there. I didn't get enough financial aid as I deserved, I guess, probably because I filled out the thing wrong and that's why, like, I'm still struggling today on trying how to figure out, like, you know the Excelsior Scholarship? Like, I'm signed up for it, like, I'm eligible for it and I still don't get it. That's weird. I know. So to this day, I do not have any financial aid. I have to pay it somehow by December. I don't know how. It's like 2000 something, which is like not a lot. But like it is when you have to pay rent, have to pay car insurance, have to pay your phone. So I work at a grocery store. I've been at the same like facility for four years there. Um, I started off as a cashier and last November, the owners of the grocery store sold it to another family. So under the different owners, I've taken on more responsibilities at the store. I'm pretty much a manager, but I don't have the title. That's an issue. Um, I do everything. I do the price changes. I do delivery orders. I do the cashier. I help with the bakery. I help with the deli. Like literally every anyone who needs help in that store, like I'm there. Um, I work there four days a week. I recently got my Sundays off. But yeah, I work there about... 30 hours a week so it is tough trying to like deal with school and work because obviously I want to focus on school school is my main priority but it sucks when you have no money to do anything so obviously I need to work to just even live life like so the routine of like going to school and going to work going to school going to work going to school going to work like sometimes I feel like a robot and it's hard because it's like there's other stuff happening in my personal life too that I have to also deal with, but you have to just keep going. So over the past year, I lost um, my ex-boyfriend and my nanny. Um, I'm trying not to cry right now. Um, so losing my nanny and my ex-boyfriend within like seven months of each other was very overwhelming because everything was like so much was happening at once. And I never experienced a death before in my life. So it was like two of literally the most important people in my life are gone. I can no longer talk to them. I can no longer, you know, like, how do I move on and like keep living? At one point to try and like occupy myself and not just be so down, I guess you could say. I was working like three jobs at one point <laughs> trying to cope with being depressed and going to school and going to work is not easy. Um, you want to take your personal days every day, but you can't. Like at nighttime, that's like when it hits you the hardest, I guess, because you're just like laying there by yourself and you're like, fuck, like this is really my life. Some people, they wake up, they don't have to think about worrying about anything. Like their parents have given them everything. They go away for school and they party and lose their scholarships and they don't even care, it doesn't matter because they know that their parents are always gonna back them up. I'm not saying my parents are not backing me up because they support me 100%. They push me to succeed and stay focused in school, but they just don't have the 
the support educationally and like financially. So it's like I'm in this by myself, but I'm not. I have a lot of support. But when it comes down to it, it's just me doing everything. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Um, there's a lot of expectations for me from my family, especially my parents. My dad all the time, he jokes around. He's like, oh, like, you're gonna buy me a Harley one day. But of course, like, they rely on me or they're counting on me to, like, graduate college, get the degree, start working for an accounting firm, start off with, like, a 100000 salary, be able to afford a nice big house and have my mom have her garden that she always wanted. So, yes, I do want that for myself. And that's what's, like, pushing me. I'm like, because I don't want to live the same way I have been living my entire life in like a small apartment and like just not happy you know when your home situation isn't like comfortable and clean and nice it's like your whole life is like shit kind of home should be like your your haven you know but when you live in an apartment building that is dirty and people live upstairs from you and people live below you and dogs barking and you can't you can never rest so my parents expect me to make a lot of money pretty much but i also want to be able to like enjoy life you know what i mean like i want to travel the only time i went out of the country was for the bahamas in our senior year trip like i told my dad it was for a freaking educational trip i want to live a good life and just be happy but it's really hard when you have so much people relying on you and so many responsibilities so you know like it's tough, but what helps me through it is, especially my dog, Bowser. Um, every time I come home, he's right there at the door, jumping on me, peeing on the floor sometimes, because he's so excited. Um, yeah, he makes me so happy. That's my son. Yeah. <laughs> then of course, like my friends, my family, and myself, I always motivate myself. Like I go down in the dumps, but then I'm like, okay, Laura, like, you are so capable of so many things. Like, I get compliments all the time on how, like, I have my head together and how smart I am. And it's like, some days I don't feel that way. But then I tell myself, if other people t are telling me that, like, then I must be something, you know? Like, And so, like, some kids who both their parents are born in the U.S., like, maybe one went to college, maybe one didn't. Maybe neither of them did. But, like, regardless, their whole college experience is like, oh, like, it should be the best time of my life. But... In reality, for a lot of people like me who are first generation students, it's not like that. Like, life happens and you just have to kind of push yourself through it until you get there. And, like, the finish line is your degree and walking off that stage. And then you could just get your life going.